Now let's discuss the nomenclature of esters. Again, they're a derivative of a carboxylic acid, so instead of a carboxylic acid, we replace the OH with an OR group. This is our ester. And before we name them, let's get some vocab down. From now on, when it comes to an ester, we're going to refer to this oxygen right here, the one doubly bonded to the carbon, as the carbonyl oxygen. And we're going to refer to this oxygen right here as the carboxyl oxygen. So let's look at our first example here. To name esters, first consider the carbonyl side right here. What would the name of this molecule be if it were a carboxylic acid? Remember, IUPAC would say ethanoic acid. So again, starting with the carboxylic acid name, we derive the ester name. And what we're going to do is call this ethanoate. Notice what we're doing here is we're replacing the ic acid part with simply eight. Now let's look at the carboxyl side. That's what you'll do next. Notice the alkyl group following the carboxyl oxygen is a methyl. So we simply place methyl in front of ethanoate. Notice there is a space between the word methyl and ethanoate. So the name of this molecule is simply methyl ethanoate. If you wanted to look at the common name, remember the common name of ethanoic acid is acetic acid. So the common name for this ester would be methyl acetate. Notice we're also changing the ic acid to the ATE ending. Let's look at another example here. Again, we start with the carbonyl side here, and we say if this were a carboxylic acid, it would be called propanoic acid. So we change the propanoic acid to simply propanoate. And then what we do next is look at the carboxyl side. That's a two carbon fragment on the carboxyl side, so that would be ethyl. And we put a space between ethyl and propanoate, so the name of this molecule is simply ethyl propanoate. For the common name, remember the common name of propanoic acid is propionic acid. So the common name for this molecule would simply be ethyl propionate. To make sure you got this, let's look at another example here. Again, starting with this side of the ester, we would call this side propanoate. And then we look at the carboxyl side over here on the right. And remember, when a benzene ring is a substituent, we call it a phenyl. So the carboxyl oxygen has a phenyl. That means we would call this molecule phenyl propanoate. And just in case, common name would be phenyl propionate. Now let's look at a substituted ester here. Notice this one has a BR connected to one of the carbons. Again, you would start with the carbonyl side, and you would also take into account the numbering. Again, the carbon that's doubly bonded to the oxygen has priority, so that's always carbon one. So if this is five carbons long, the ester by itself, this side would be called pentanoate. And since we have a bromine on the third carbon, we would call this three bromo pentanoate. However, we still have to take care of the right-hand side, the carboxyl side here. Notice we have, again, just a methyl here on the other side here, so we have to list that down. So the name of this molecule would be methyl space 3-bromopentanoate. And just in case, common name here would be methyl beta bromovalerate. While we're looking at esters here, we should also know how to name this thing right here. Although this is not an ester, it's actually just, if you look at it, it's the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid. Think about it, if this were a carboxylic acid, it would have a hydrogen. And if you rip the hydrogen off, this is what would be left behind. You would have a negative formal charge on the oxygen. And let's say it happens to be making a salt with the Na ion. The reason why we're talking about this now is because it's almost like you name these like you would an ester. Again, let's start with this side of the molecule here. If it were a carboxylic acid, remember it would be called ethanoic acid. But we're changing that to ethanoate. Again, just like it were some kind of ester. However, instead of having an OR group on the carboxyl side, we have a sodium instead. 
and all you simply do is list that sodium as if it were some kind of alkyl group, meaning the name of this molecule would simply be sodium space ethanoate. And just in case, common name for this would simply be sodium acetate. We're going to see this molecule a lot in the next few chapters, so definitely take note. However, there's a little more to naming esters. And the reason why is that sometimes you can have an ester that's actually within a ring like this. However, we wouldn't call this molecule an ester. We would actually call it a lactone. A lactone is simply just an ester within a ring. How would you name this molecule? Well, you would actually name it 2-oxacyclopentanone. How did we get that? Well, let's make sense of this. First of all, notice how big the ring is. It's basically a five-membered ring. So that's where the cyclopentan in the name comes from. Cyclo meaning ring, penten meaning five. And notice we also have an O-N-E ending, kind of like a ketone. And we could think of carbon-1 in this molecule as kind of like a ketone group. The last thing to explain is where does this 2-oxa come from? Well, that's simply calling out this 2 position right here. Notice the second position there is an oxygen, so we would say 2-oxa. All lactones are named using the 2-oxa own system. We can also talk about the common name of this molecule. It would be simply gamma butero-lactone. How do we make sense of this? Well, the butero part comes from the fact that there are actually four carbons within the ring. And the lactone part of the name comes from obviously the fact that this molecule is a lactone. Now, where does the gamma come from? Well, again, if you use the Greek system, this carbon right here next to the carboxylic acid carbon would be the alpha carbon. This would be beta, and this would be the gamma. Since the carboxyl oxygen is connected to the gamma carbon, we have to call that out in the name. Because this seems a little complicated, let's look at another example to make sure you got it. What would be the name of this molecule? Well, right off the bat, you would have to call it 2-oxacyclohexanone. Remember, cyclohexan because it's a six-membered ring, O-N-E because it's a lactone, and 2-oxa because the carboxyl oxygen would be position 2 on the ring. That's what I mean by naming lactones using the 2 oxa own system. They're always starting out as 2 oxa, then the name of the ring, then the O-N-E ending. And just in case your professor likes a lot of common names, you would name this molecule Delta Valero Lactone. Again, Valero means 5 carbons, Lactone means it's a lactone, and delta means that the carboxyl oxygen is connected to the delta carbon within the ring. However, let's look at another example here. What if our lactone is substituted? Like, for instance, let's place a Cl right here. How do we name this? Well, remember, in a lactone, this oxygen right here is considered the second position. He's numbered two, which means this next carbon here would be numbered three. So the name of this molecule is simply 3-chloro-2-oxa-cyclohexanone. So that is how we name esters and esters within rings.